Dear listeners, it's nighttime, but whatever you do, do not open up your eyes. Just lean back and watch the visions of sugared monoliths dancing across your gaze. And listen to that sweet, sweet tinkle of the holiday song marinating your soul like the thickest of sugar plums. Tonight, it's the start of the holiday season. All is right in the house. Santa's stuck in saturation control while Mommy's kissing the shape under the mistletoe, while Chorus is out and about passing out their propaganda in the form of those lovely little hymns. My name is Lavanya. I'm Astro. And I'm Xavier. So crack open that non-alcoholic eggnog and settle in. This is a Blackout Club show for Blackout Club players, and today is a snow day, so there are no rules. Our special episode today is a compilation of stories from around the community submitted by players like you. While there's no spoilers that are terribly egregious in here, the fact of the matter remains as you go through these memories, you will be unwrapping each one to discover the mysteries inside, so be prepared. It might be a sweater, or else it could be a newborn kitten. Also, there's no return slip, so you cannot bring it back to the store. So, one of my favorite TBC memories to date is that time that um, I was playing with Archer, and we were we got contacted by the Idare. And, you know, we're just having a chat with the Idare, you know, having a conversation. And then the Idare asked us, who out of his family has been visiting the children? And so Archer starts listing off names and says, speak is one. And I go, Archer, Archer, oh no. And then right after that, the shake comes out and Archer actually gets an eye from the idea of telling him to run. And so we have to haul our butts out of there with the shape hot on our tails. And that's also the game where we discovered that, um, where we first discovered that the sail nippers will not save you if the shape is directly on your tail after saying speak is one's name. Oops. We managed to make it back to the boxcar safe and sound. And, uh, oh my god, we were torn between laughing and crying for the rest of the night. And, uh, when I wrote out that transcript, I called it the Archer No edition because that was just so incredibly funny and I love that. That was a good memory. <laughs> right, okay, so there was one time I was going to send in a light to speak as one. And my friends were messing around and I took a sip of water after placing down the light on the ritual table and my friends did something I don't know what it was but it made me laugh and I was about to send in the ritual but I started choking on the water so I ended up almost sending speakers one 30 seconds of me just choking on water and there was another time I was in a game with my friends and we had the dampener mission and the shape was out on me in angel mode. And um, we placed the last dampener down, but the shape wouldn't go away. <laughs> and we were all joking about it. And I just called out, hey, angel, I'm sorry, I know you hate me. And then all of a sudden I just see the eye closing symbol. And then it just says, you have been absolved. One of the TBC memories that sticks out to me is the first time I and the other slugs met inner teeth. Like, We've been playing for about a week at that point, and it was late. Red had just popped off, and we go into this mission, and pretty much everything goes wrong right from the start. Shape comes out before we can leave the first objective. I'm running in the middle of Lower Hoadley, screaming my head off like a freaking idiot. And then just suddenly, you just hear this voice talking to your friend about how, what she said to you. And no, Spoopy didn't tell me what she said to Inner Teeth, just that she had sent a light to Inner Teeth. And it's just suddenly you're just, something has come out of the skies and is talking to you and your friend for reasons you do not know nor understand, and then drags you to her moon palace to ask you if you want to crawl into oblivion with her. And it, it's intimidating and probably one of the most awe-inspiring moments I've had 
in 24 years of playing video games. So my name is Lavanya, and my favorite story from the Blackout Club has to be when I first started playing, because I had found the game off of a list of upcoming survival horror games with the description stated it had to focus on the narrative, stealth, and atmosphere. And of course, that it had been made by a former developer on Thief, which sparked my interest and set up some wildly false expectations. Because for my first six months or so of playing, I was completely certain that the AI was intensely more advanced than it seemed. Every glitch was personally fucking with me. A cruelly programmed creature put into the system solely and explicitly to gaslight and to disguise the true intelligence of it all. And because I was so certain that I was correct, I shared this belief aggressively with every single person that I dragged into the game. I was like, you have to close every window. Close every door behind us or they'll know. If you hide in a closet, the sleepers wouldn't find you unless they'd heard you or they anticipated the behavior, and then they would. If you walked in the wood, you might as well just kill yourself right now. I fed my particular section of the community so full of lies and the intricacies of the AI so that every single time that the shapes stopped and stared at us instead of pursuing, or the lucids got confused in their tracking, I just saw it as further proof for the foundation of my accidental palace of lies. Eventually, Xavier's ruthless disregard of injury made me realize that death isn't an ability that comes to us all. And so the only means of really succeeding in any video game is through embracing that. So at that point, kind of faded off. Kind of realized that the AI was not quite as wildly, aggressively intelligent as I had been assuming in my rampant paranoia. But until then, that was pretty much one of my favorite things about the Blackout Club. And it's still one of my favorite memories of the game overall, especially whenever we get a new player in and the new player starts trying to sell me organically homegrown, not coming from me, the exact same crazy paranoid bullshit that I believed initially. So basically, I remember that me and my friends were playing the Blackout Club. And these were all friends that I met through the Blackout Club too. We'd grown pretty close in like a very short amount of time and it was really fun. And we were having so much fun one night that we didn't want to stop playing even though we were exhausted. So what we did was we all just literally hung out in the boxcar. We all stood in a circle and we did the little kneel emote. So it was kind of like we were sitting down together and we just talked about life until I think six in the morning before we finally passed out. <laughs> I think one of us fell asleep on the other, actually. I remember hearing some snoring. It was... it was really fun. It was really cute. So, my favorite memory from the Blackout Club that I'm about to talk about, I think has to be one of my last, last encounters, where it was 3 a.m., I was walking through the maze, very loopy, when suddenly I just heard you know, his good old sadistic giggle, which always scares me. Um, but you know, we talked for a little bit, it's pr pretty chill, um, but at the end, he asked me if I had any updates on Seed the Grudge, because he was trying to get her attention, you know, he just got it out of his relationship within her teeth, or forced out, I guess, anyway, he's trying to get her and uh, Seed the Grudge's attention, and he wanted to know if there were any updates, and I had to inform him, no, Seed the Grudge, in fact, hadn't been talking recently. And he, you know, gave a very rational response of just saying, it's fine, right? About 15 times when I don't think he thought it was fine. I, I, he may have, looking back, I think he was a little panicked, a little worried that it wasn't going to work out. But you know what? Glad to see in his recent encounters that he's very cool, calm, and collected. Never mind, he's still freaking out. He's just talking about the hunter. Anyway, last, last is great. That's it. More on this after a word from our sponsors. Good morning, Red Acre. It's that time of the year again where layers of snow are blanketing the town and our festive rites of family and connections are rampant through the streets. Now, if your holiday celebrates gift giving, you might be wondering if you have the perfect present for your loved ones. Well, 
Uh, no further, because the gift you should give to your loved ones is power. Pure, absolute power to do what they want when they want. Who needs gifts when you can just take what you want from this big, wide world? Of course, the right to power is not for everyone, dear children. Only the strong and fierce have any claim to real power. Oh, but don't you worry about that, no sir, Bob. Those lovely souls with the gumption and dedication to earn their creature comforts will survive in the annual winter blood sports. <laughs> and they'll be blessed with that ultimate gift of power as their just reward. Now, if this sounds like a good token for your loved ones, then please direct them to the nearest mirror light a candle in front of it, and then pray to the most given voice of them all, the Hunter. <laughs> and here was that announcement. Happy holidays, Red Acre. So the best moments I've had in the Blackout Club have probably, have always just been sharing really, really good moments with really, really good people. You know, like that time I got adopted. So I'd been doing my usual thing for a while, you know, being a gremlin, talking about in her teeth, spreading the good news. I'd been sending her lights for a little while when out of nowhere, one of my friends said, oh my God, Spooky, if you like her so much, why don't you ask her to adopt you? And let's be real, I kind of thought it would have been funny you know, to see how she'd respond to that sort of thing. So I sent a light doing just that. A few days later, I was just sort of trolling about with friends and I heard her say my name. And I think I may have screamed a little, just not much, just a lot. She'd shown up because of that sleep deprived, drunken text of a light and chosen me for it. So, anyway, that's the story of how I met my end mother. Literally. Hi, it's Saviel, if you don't already recognize my dulcet tones, here with an amazing memory of playing the Blackout Club. So, dear listeners, we all know Lavanya drinks pretty deep out of that Speak as One Kool-Aid bowl. But it wasn't always that way. At first, well, they were downright antagonistic towards their now dear voice. It was pretty mutual. They would come into our games to taunt Lavanya and send them spiraling into anger as we all tried to avoid Starkus in the shape. To somewhat limited success, really. Is it character growth to get negged into allegiance to a god because they called you a hypocrite and selfish for never sacrificing? Anyways, it was only like the third time our whole team had ever had an encounter, and SAO spent a good portion of it laying into Lavanya. And Lavanya, in true form, got fighting and argumentative right back at SAO. They were on a roof and told them that if they could feel the pain of all the residents of Red Acre, then they would make them feel something. There was a sleeper down below, so Lavanya, armed with nothing but rage, tried to jump down on top of him to choke him out. Except, Lavanya's great at falling, still is, but landings are a work in progress. They fell down in front of the sleeper instead, brought themselves down to minimum health, and alerted the sleeper, who instantly started grabbing them and dragging them away. Of course, while SAO commented about how it was all so pathetic. Looking back on it, I guess that's probably what really set the tone for their relationship with the god. Especially the part where I came over and saved their ass while laughing at them. Of course. There are many reasons why I love the Blackout Club. From the jolt of adrenaline, from seeing the god eye on your screen, to the utter heart-stopping panic when a god's voice booms in your lobby, to trying to explain any piece of lore to Kaboink, to waking up in the middle of the night to messages from friends wanting to tinfoil their theories. But one memory in particular is from the I Dare. I was talking to the I Dare and asked him a question, and his response was, chicken and egg. After that, I ended up having surgery in real life and couldn't play the game for a while. And when I came back, I completely forgot that I had asked him that question. 
The next encounter I had with him, I asked him that question, and his response was, again, chicken and egg. And the fact that the enhanced horror team were listening so closely and remembered that I had already asked that question made me feel more seen and heard than I had felt in a very long time. It's those small details and gestures that makes me absolutely love the Blackout Club. The Blackout Club is obviously a game about friendship, and the team has tried their very hardest to make sure that everything in the game is conducive to being friendly, to being nice to your teammates and helping them. And unfortunately, some people, as in myself, are fairly good at getting around that. A lot of my favorite memories include times that I have purposefully sabotaged my teammates in good fun, of course. There have been a couple times once Lunatic Parade and I trapped people in the elevator endlessly. On several other occasions, Lavanya has been playing with me and I've said, Lavanya, look at me, and they do every time, and then I throw noisemakers in their face. Another time, I remember, we were heading for the exit cave, and I was grappling a lucid in order to move them away from my teammates, and Spooky threw a flashbang at the lucid, which broke my hold. And because I was annoyed after I finished grappling the lucid, I ran up to the cave where Spooky was, and I threw noisemakers, I think three of them, at him, and then my grappling hook. And immediately the shape targeted him. He went and stood by the shape hatch for a good minute, and the shape didn't come out mercifully until after that minute. And <laughs> a wild chase sequence ensued where Spooky ran into the cave, the shape ran in after him, shaped him, and almost wiped our entire team. <laughs> but I maintain I was in the right. Hey everybody, Dark Crow here. Um, sitting at the foot of my bed trying to single out a particular moment in a game filled with amazing moments. I could tell you it was being becoming a chosen of the idea or getting sent to the moon with inner teeth. Maybe it was that time I finally pissed off Speakers 1 enough that he sent me to saturation control, but I don't think any of those really tops a five-word response to an offhand comment when Blackout Club HQ sent me one text message that pretty much validated everything I've ever held true in my life. Um, that made me feel like I was a part of something bigger and greater than myself. That I was really a part of this community and that I needed to be a part of this community. And that response was, no ranch chips, HQ out. The Blackout Club is made by Question Games. Our transcript and video is by Lavanya. Audio editing is by me, Astro. Our publicity is Spoderman. Special thanks to all users who submitted memories for this episode. They are credited by name in the episode description. Xaviel killed the elf on a shelf. You're welcome. <laughs>